We'll take our text tonight from Matthew, the 24th chapter. We'll start here at the single verse, Matthew 24 and verse 30, 37. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We uh, can certainly compare things that we see happening in our world today to the time of Noah. We can read there just not long after man was created and given everything he could ever desire that, of course, the fall of man came into play. And we see that in the sixth chapter of Genesis that uh, wickedness and violence filled the earth. It tells us that men were evil continually. In fact, verse 4 says there were giants in the earth in those days. It also, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Going on down to the 11th verse, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? God saw it. It wasn't concealed from him. These evil men were, it says, of renown, famous for their evilness, if you will, wickedness. They were committing uh, immorality, violence, terrible things, right in the face of heaven, with defiance toward God. And God saw it. And God sees it today. And yet in all this evilness and wickedness going on, his mercy was looking for those that honored him. And he saw Noah. He, he chose not to punish the righteous with the evil. But he saw Noah, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He gave Noah the plans to escape the coming destruction. God didn't just come up with this plan because the first one didn't work. This wasn't plan B. But he found it was time to execute judgment for the evil that was being done on the earth. God never says, I didn't see that coming. God sees it all. He knows it all. He sees what's coming today, tomorrow. And as long as he tarries, he will see what's coming ahead. God is going to incite judgment again. But he offers a way out. Amen. This time we can read ahead. We can see what's coming. We know as we read the Bible that there's judgment. There's uh, a terrible thing coming on the earth. But he has a, provided a way for everyone to escape. Right. And that way of escape is Jesus Christ. Amen. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of man be. I'd like to look at four similarities between the two ways of escaping destruction, punishment. First of all, an invitation went out in Noah's time. We, we need to know, and I'm sure we do, that God is not looking to destroy man, but to save him. An invitation went out in Noah's day. Noah, we read in second, uh, second Peter that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That he told those around him what was, what was going on, what God had told him. Uh, I'm sure at times begging them to come and help and, and be prepared to get on the ark. He had over a hundred years to tell them what was going on. I'm sure uh, the ark in his backyard was a pretty good conversation starter. No one had to ask him, Noah, what you been up to? It was pretty obvious that he was pretty consumed, fully consumed, with providing this way of escape. 
His focus was on that. His energy was put toward that. It was not a secret that Noah was building an ark. An invitation goes out today. Titus 2.11 tells us that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. We can read in the first chapter of St. John that Jesus was a light and He came into the world. And it says that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. When judgment comes, no one will have the excuse, I didn't know. I didn't know about Jesus. The Bible tells us that every man is enlightened. And the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. There will be no excuses but just silence when judgment comes and people had not uh, took advantage of the gift of Christ and salvation. We read also in 2 Peter that God is not slack concerning His promise. In fact, that chapter tells us that uh, starting at the second verse, that ye be that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. You ever heard that? It's just the same. We've heard this all our lives. For this they willingly are ignorant, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, preserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But... Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. The promise is, where is the promise of His coming? God is not slack concerning that promise, but He is patient. And He is loving. And he looks to men to save them, not to destroy them. He's not looking to, to uh, see how many he can keep out of, the, out of the, uh, the boat, but how many can I bring in? The promise of his coming. We know that the Lord is calling people. We know that people are getting saved. We don't see it every day uh, around us. Sometimes we do. We thank God for that, but we know that the Lord is continually reaching out to people. And around the world, people are coming in droves and being saved. He is not slack concerning the promise of His coming. He's coming again. And we need to be ready. We, as as passengers of the ark, have an obligation to invite others. We may be the extension of that light. In fact, the Lord says... Ye are the light of the world. That light that cometh into the world, that lighteth every man. Uh, Maybe that happens through you and me. The invitation maybe comes from us. So there's an invitation that went out in Noah's day. There's an invitation that goes out to those today. The second thing is there was only one ark. No one else was building an ark down the street. There was not another boat. There are not multiple ways to escape the flood. God told Noah to build one boat. And anyone, anything that was going to be saved would have to board that boat that God said to build. We read there in Genesis also 6 verse 22 that according to all that God commanded him, so did he. 
I, I'm, I believe that Noah paid attention to every detail. Whatever God said, uh, I don't know if he was writing it down or uh, it, it uh, was in his memory, but every detail, I'm sure Noah was, was paying particular attention to the size and the time and the weights and the, the dimensions. How exactly do I build this ark? This is my way out. I believe God's going to destroy the world, and this is my family's way out of here. Even the animals obeyed when God called. There is only one salvation. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. One way. Right. Romans 5.1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into His grace that appears to all men, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. One day our hope will become reality. We will stand in the, within the glory of God. Amen. If we board the ark, if we take advantage of that one way out of this world, there is no other way to get to heaven. Some may say these days it's an old-fashioned. Well, my sin was old-fashioned. My guilt was old-fashioned. God's love was old-fashioned, I know. But the way I was saved was the old-fashioned way. And His blood washes whiter than snow. We're glad for the old-fashioned way. There's a lot of things that are old-fashioned. Gravity's old-fashioned. It's been around since the world began. But we can't change that either. No one disputes its relevance. If we stumble, gravity pulls us down. If we're saved when we stumble, salvation holds us up. He keeps us. The Bible tells us we must be born again. One way. Noah and his family entered into the ark through one door. If we want to spend eternity in heaven, we have to get there through Jesus Christ. With repentance and a turning from sin. Amen. Period. There's no Buddha, no Muhammad, no being a good person, no self-righteousness, no self-righteousness, no knowledge of science and space. One way. And that way is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Number 3. Noah's family was safe once they were in. The Bible tells us that the Lord, He shut the door. He closed them in. As the rain began and the fountains of the deep opened up, they were all safe inside. Noah had built this ark exactly how God instructed, so there's no way it could fail. When we follow God's direction, just the way He lays it out. He will help us and we can't fail. If we stick to that Word, if we cling tightly to Him, if we honor His Word and obey it, and we filter our lives through the Word of God and through prayer, He keeps us safe. All who were on that, uh, that ark made a choice to do so. And they were glad they did through all the persecution, through all the scoffers, people calling them possibly fools. It's never rained before. What are you even talking about, rain? Don't you think it's a little extreme? Building a big boat? Maybe not even a river within miles. But God, uh, Noah knew what God had spoken to his heart. And we too, we know what God has spoken to our heart. We know what's real. Yeah. At times, I'm thankful that the Lord makes things that we can't see 
more real than the things we can see. We can look through our uh, eyes of faith that God has given us and see that Jesus Christ is coming again. I may hear things that I I think are going to happen tomorrow and they say they're going to happen tomorrow. I'm not sure about that. But I'm sure that Jesus is coming again. And I'm sure we can be ready as we enter through that door and get on the boat, as it were. They made a choice to do that. Isaiah 43 tells us how the Lord protects us. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, the one who will save us out of destruction. No, it's not extreme. We're not being extreme when we follow the Lord wholeheartedly. That's how it's supposed to be. I heard someone say once, God does not want a partnership. He wants ownership. And that's what we owe him. Ownership of our hearts, our lives. Once, they were, once we're saved and are safe from the storms outside, the storms may still be there, and they do come and they go, but God holds us in his care. Keeps us above the destruction. Keeps us above the storm. Some of the leading scientists in our world today call it foolishness, but they're just fulfilling Scripture. We read in 1 Corinthians, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Aren't you thankful for the preaching of the cross? The power that was not lost on Calvary. The power that reaches through time 2,000 plus years and can reach into a man or a woman's heart today and save them from their sin. The power of the cross to us. Not foolishness. It's the power of God that we witnessed in our own lives when we've been saved. Just as those that entered into the ark knew they were on board, we know when we have been born again. The sins are gone. How could you not know? When Jesus comes in and cleans your heart, makes you a new creature, of course you're going to know. The people did not know his family, didn't wonder if they were on the boat or not. They knew they, they made a choice to get on. There was no doubt they were inside. They made a conscious decision to, to walk up that ramp and get into the boat. Just as they would have known if they had jumped out. We sometimes say or, or hear people say that they lost their salvation. I don't believe that's quite accurate if someone finds himself in a backslidden condition they made a choice to get off the boat they made a choice to do so people don't lose their salvation as they lose keys or a phone or something important they give it away they make a choice i know from experience unfortunately but thank god for his grace People don't misplace their salvation. They choose to set it aside. We choose to keep a good tight hold on it. It'll get us to heaven. It'll keep us until the Lord returns. All we have to do is want to stay with Jesus, and He will help us do that. He'll help us all the way. This plan of salvation is perfect. And if we build on it, as Noah did, We're going to make it. The last thing is that I didn't notice as we read this, it's not mentioned that there's any navigation equipment on the ark. 
Something was missing that you'd normally see on a, on a vessel. There's no helm, no rudder, no oars, no sail. Once they were inside, God did all the navigating. Even the window that was placed in the ark was only to see up. They, didn't, they couldn't see down. They sent the dove, the, the birds out of that to, to go and see if there was land because they couldn't see out. They couldn't see down. That tells me that God wants us to continue to look up. Don't get caught up with what's going on around us. Our, our responsibility once we're on the boat is just to keep, keep what's inside clean. Mend any small, do any small repairs that we need to do with inside our vessel where Jesus lives. Upkeep. Just let the Lord navigate. Keep your eyes on Him. He knows how to get us where we're going. He knows the way. There's been a lot of times in my life I've reached out to the Lord and said, Lord, I don't know how to do this, but you've been this way before. You know how to get me to the other side or to where I'm going. And he's never let me down. Uh, aren't you uh, glad you've boarded the ark of God's salvation? That uh, know that it will take us through all the way to heaven? If you haven't, you need to make that choice today. Tonight. But won't you choose to to serve the Lord, to give Him your heart before the door is shut and the storm begins, before judgment comes. On our knees is where we make that happen. On our knees is where we thank the Lord for this great salvation, for the things He's done for us, His keeping power, His ability to help us through the storm. I thank God that He invites all of us not to just take on the salvation, to accept it, to to tre treasure it, to cherish it, but also to maintain it. He'll help us to do that until He comes. We're going to escape judgment. We're going to go up one of these days out of this old world. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. We're going to have a time to thank the Lord. If you uh, don't know Him tonight, uh, please make this your night. Make this the time that you say, this is the day that the Lord called me. This seventh day of March 2021, you can look back and say, that day the Lord saved me. Made a difference, brought me in, I'm on my way to heaven. We're going to have a time to pray. The song is 492.